Hello, and thank you for watching my video. As always, please like and subscribe, and if you have some comments of what you liked or what you would like me to cover, please add them in the comments. Today, I'm going to be going over the API feature and how to set it up. I will cover also some examples of what else you can do in later videos. So let's begin. A few things. I'm assuming that you have already set up your PHP IPAM server. You have enabled everything to have a working version of PHP IPAM. I have tested what I am talking about in this video on both version 1.5 and 1.6 and will be demonstrating with version 1.6 as you can see here. To get the API feature up and working, we need a few things working first so that we can get our first pull, hopefully a push, and potentially a delete. First, we need to go to the PHP IPAM administration, go to the PHP IPAM settings. In here, we need to go down to the feature setting API and turn it on. Also, I'll add this so that it's correct and hit save. Next, we will need to install a self-signed certificate. And to do that, as you can see, I'm in HTTP mode here. Let me see if I can zoom this in a little bit. First, we need to make sure that we have sudo. Uh, we need to sudo and install OpenSSL. Also, we need to install mod SSL for Apache. If you already had mod SSL, you need to make sure that it's enabled. So that would be something like this. If you're on Rocky Linux, would be to do that. But I already know mine's up. Next, we need to next we need to uh, actually create our self-signed certificate. To do that, first I want to put my certificate into a private folder. So I'm going to create that folder in my etc SSL private. Next, I'm going to generate my private key. I'm going to give it a pass phrase. Next, I'm going to generate the self-signed certificate for 365 days. As you can see, I'm putting it in as my keys there, and I already created that. I'm going to put in my passphrase. I'm just going to hit enter. That should be fine. Next, I need to configure Apache to use the certificate. So I'm going to go into my HTTP dir directory and the create a configuration here. Now I've already created and I will explain this. As you can see, this is my virtual host. This is my IP address of my server. This is my server admin. This is where my certs are. And remember, I made that folder here. Um, these are pretty important. And then I have an error log, so I will save that. There we go. Now I need to restart Apache. So I will do that by pasting that in. Hopefully there's no errors. I might get asked for my passphrase. Enter, and it should be good. Now, that we have the certificate assigned to our server, I can actually go to here. And what I want to do here is I want to change to HTTPS. 
because I was on HTTP, right? So I'm going to get this because my I don't trust it. I didn't go through a certificate signing, so I need to do that. And then I can always add this, right? I created an exception, but, right? So let me show you. I have this cert, right? So we're good there. And you can see I'm on HTTPS. So um, now that we have the, we need to go to the API, which is over here. And as you can see that this is ready to go. So I can actually create an API key. Now, this is the name of our app. You could almost say the user ID. This is the app code or password, but in API land, this, these two are needed. App permissions, right? So there's disabled. Maybe you want to keep it, but for whatever, uh, there's read. So you can only read. There's read and write, which means you can both read and post. And then there's read, write, and admin. And admin, these rules all follow the rules that are in the system. Admin lets you go to areas within PHP IPAM that are specifically for admin. So I'm going to put mine to read write. Um, these other ones I'm going to keep default. And this here is why we created the SSL certificate. I had a lot of problems in my testing with encrypted and user token without SSL. Um, so to just get you up to speed as quickly as possible. I created a self-signed cert. I would suggest using Let's Encrypt. I may actually make another video using Let's Encrypt. Now, I would suggest that you use Notepad to copy this key, because we're going to be using it later to do some things, and also copy this up here. Everything else we can pretty much leave default. Um, as you can see, it, you know, the transaction lock, uh, you know, all of these things are, if you're going to get more in depth. Right now, we just want to get the API set up. So uh, let's hit add to create this. We now have our a new API key. You can see there's the app ID, what my permissions are, what the app security is. And of course, I have last access as never. Now I'll come back to this. Every time you access the API, it's recorded just as an FYI. So the next thing, I'm going to do this actually on the local server. And I want to test that I actually have a working, I can actually read the from the database. And to do this, I need to grab a few things. Okay, so my token, I'm going to put it in here. And what I want to do is this. So, and I want to explain this as well. So, I'm putting in the dash K so that curl, curl is going to say, hey, you're, you're, you're using an unsigned cert. So, the K is going to ignore it. Now, this is the IP address. You see, this is my, the name of my app, the subnet, and the subnet ID. Now, what I'm going to do is this. I'm going to show you the basic way this is set up. And this will give you a better idea. So when you're doing your call, right, you have, you're going to use curl in this case, because I'm not going to use like postman or something. You have either your server, API, your app name, right? So let's do this. I can grab this. It's not going to work. 
So as you can see, I, this is my server API, new app test, right? Uh, subnet and then subnet ID. Now, how did I get that subnet ID? So if I come over here and I go and I read, let's say this guy, and I look up at the top here, right? You'll see that's the name of my server, so on and so forth. And then right there at the end is the subnet ID of six. So over here, right, I have subnet ID six header, and then this is my token. So if I am successful with this, if I hit copy and I go back to my shell session and I paste that in, right? Did I have a success? No, I did not. Okay, so I see where my error is. I forgot to put in the S. So, and there we go. So as you can see here, right, it's showing the name of my server, which version of PHP, and you can see here the success codes. And it's gonna show that this is the 10.65.22 network. And let's see if I, yeah. That's this, right? And um, everything looks good. Now that's reading, right? So if I want to get in there and I want to create a new subnet and I want to post into this server, right? Let me clear this up a little bit, go down. There's, it's very simple. Um, go I gotta update this a little bit where did my notepad go oh, here it is. so this will give us the capability to post and I do need to update my token and let's run through this real fast right so what I'm saying here is I want to post a subnet 192.168.1.0 mask, uh, call it new subnet. This is my server. This is my app ID. I'm putting it in subnets. This is um, my token and so on and so forth. So from the command line, if I copy that and I paste it, right? We should have a success. We do, as you can see down here. And if we go back to our server and I go to customers, we should see 192.68, right? There we are. And it's called new subnet. Now, something else I can do is I can actually update my subnet. And the way I can do that is uh, let's see if I can bring this back. So this will update. So um, what I'm doing to here, right, is you can see that seven. So let's see what is the, this is seven. As you can see, my subnet ID. And what I'm going to do here is I'm actually patching, right? And I'm going to give it an updated description because the current description says, new subnet. So if I run this, let's see what happens. So I'll grab this and I'm going to copy that and let me clear some of that out of the way. There we go. And we had a success. So if I refresh, updated description. And then finally, my last test will be to delete the subnet. And to delete the subnet, uh, let me, as you can see, I'm going to the server, that's my 
subnet ID. So let's see how this works. I will bring up my shell. Where'd that go? There it is. And so I'm saying delete subnet seven, and it was successful. And if I come back over here and I go to the house and I go to subnets, customers, and the 192 subnet's gone, so we're successful. So we validated that our API works and that we're able to read, write, delete, and update. Well, I hope this video made understanding how to set up the API feature. And finally, I wanted to thank you for taking the time to watch my video. And as always, please like and subscribe and add some comments of what you liked or what else you would like me to cover. Thank you and have a great day. Bye.